Greetings once again, my friends, and grace and peace be with you from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, this being the sixth Sunday after the Feast of the Epiphany, let's join in our prayer for this Sunday. O oh God, the strength of all who put their trust in you, mercifully accept our prayers, and because in our weakness we can do nothing good without you, give us the help of your grace that in keeping your commandments we may please you both in will and in deed through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Here's a very simple song that, based on an important teaching of Jesus that tells us to first seek the kingdom of God and all the other things that concern us will follow. So let's join in. Seek ye first. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you Alleluia, Alleluia Ask and it shall be given unto you Seek and ye shall find Knock and the door will be opened unto you Alleluia, Alleluia Wise words for all of us to follow there. Our psalm today is Psalm 1, the very first psalm of, this, of the Psalter, and uh, one full of wisdom and going to be part of our little meditation today. Uh, and it goes like this. Blessed is the man who walk, walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law he meditates day and night. He is like a tree planted by streams of water that yields its fruit in season, and its leaf does not wither. In all he does he prospers. The wicked are not so, but are like the chaff that the wind drives away. Therefore the wicked will not stand in the judgment nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. And our gospel lesson today is from the Gospel of Luke. <clears throat> This is um, a section of Luke that is pretty much what's known as the Sermon on the Plain. It's Luke's version of what is known as the Sermon on the Mount. It's smaller than Matthew's and slightly different in places, but also has many, many of the same things. And this is how it begins. And he came down with them and stood on a level place with a great crowd of his disciples and a great multitude of people from all Judea and Jerusalem and the seacoast of Tyre and Sidon who came to hear him and to be healed of their diseases. And those who were troubled with unclean spirits were cured and all the crowd sought to touch him for power came forth from him and healed them all. And he lifted up his eyes on his disciples and said, Blessed are you poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you that hunger now, for you shall be satisfied. Blessed are you that weep now, for you shall laugh. Blessed are you when men hate you, and when they exclude you, and revile you, and cast out your name as evil on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day, and leap for joy, for behold, your reward is great in heaven. For so their fathers did to the false prophets. 
but so their fathers did to the prophets. But woe to you that are rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe to you that are full now, for you shall hunger. Woe to you that laugh now, for you shall mourn and weep. Woe to you when all men speak well of you, for so their fathers did to the false prophets. The gospel of the Lord. Very di different between the true prophets and the false prophets there. I got them mixed up a little bit. So you have uh, Jesus saying, blessed are these folks, woe to these folks, right? Quite strong stuff there. You know, I grew up in a neighborhood uh, in the 50s and 60s. It was a lower middle class neighborhood, poor, I suppose you would have to call it. We were a very humble family and very mixed neighborhood of, of blacks and many different working class ethnic groups of uh, immigrant Italians like us and Irish and German and Polish and this and that. And but of course, we all went to school together and we all played together and everything like this and our parents worked together and all sorts of stuff. But there was also a, a just generally understood cultural thing that you made a lot of jokes about each other, right? You made <coughs> You made uh, jokes about the Polish people. The Polish people made jokes about the Italian people, et cetera. It was all in, all in good fun, and we all teased each other about our different national uh, uh, ethnic uh, sort of characteristics and idiosyncrasies and things like this, something we would say often. Uh, my father, who was pretty much a wise guy, <coughs> would say, look, there's two kinds of people in this world. There's Italians and people who wish they were Italian. That would, that's the sort of thing that we would say. Um, now, I think you're probably aware that, that those kinds of jokes are taboo these days. You know, you're, you're really not uh, almost permitted anymore to tease people about their identity, you see. You, you, you're not allowed to tease or, or, or have good-humored fun about Oh, you know, Italians are like this, or Jews are like that, or whatever. It's, it's just not even, everybody's hypersensitive. And it's expanded beyond uh, those sorts of things to my gender, my gender identity, you know, my sexual orientation, uh, or I'm a combination of different things. I'm not only a, I'm not only a, non-binary, sexually non-binary. I'm also Hispanic, uh, half Hispanic and half Asian non-binary. You know, like everybody's defining themselves by these characteristics, and that's what they understand to be their identity, you see. And it's a sacrosanct thing, and to, and to touch it is like this blasphemous Sacrilege now is what it is. It's become so much. In other words, I am, what am I is the question. I am this, I am this. Now all this stuff of everybody being defined by this or that characteristic or this or that uh, uh, choice about their uh, sexual activity or their concept of themselves as gender-wise is a uh, complete, utter nonsense from the biblical perspective, which is the true perspective. Right? In the Bible, in today's texts and all through, there are very clearly two kinds of people. As much as the modern world does not want to hear that there is actually a this and a that, and that this is not that, right? There's this and that, and this is not that, in other words. <laughs> they, they don't want to hear that anymore. The way the Bible looks at it, there are two kinds of people, the righteous and the wicked. Psalm 1 talks about that, and it talks about it in many, many other places, and talks about how the righteous is blessed. The righteous are those who are blessed in the same way Jesus talks about it. Blessed are you when this and this and this. Blessed are those this way, but woe to those this way. What's he talking about? If we look at Luke, we see <clears throat> 
These people are blessed who are hungry now and mourning now and this and that because they're not identifying themselves by that characteristic of do I have a lot of stuff? Am I satisfied? Am I popular? Am I, uh, do I have a great reputation? Does everybody speak well of me? This isn't how I, this, this isn't how I define myself. This isn't how I identify myself, all right? I'm yearning for something more. I'm yearning for something more pure and true beyond this. In other words, it's a spiritual hunger. It's a spiritual mourning, all right? Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a desire for a, a good reputation in God's sight, not in man's sight. That's not the case with these other people. Woe to you who are rich now, people who are very satisfied with their circumstances, feel very good about themselves. I'm fine. I'm defined by, what are you? I'm a very successful lawyer. I'm doing fine. What are you? Oh, I'm very happy. I have a great reputation. I'm very famous. I'm a big celebrity. Uh, everybody knows me, everybody talks about me, everybody wants to follow me on Twitter, everybody this and that, and I'm, I'm just great. Everything's great. Well, the time is coming when all of that is going to mean nothing at all, you see? Nothing at all. It's anchored in nothing. In Psalm 1, you have the man who is meditating on the law of God, and that is his delight. All right, blessed is the man who does not get distracted by the counsel of the wicked, the people who are just utterly obsessed in the world and themselves and the things of the world. And they scoff at the things of God. They scoff at the people of God because they're just way, way too smart for all of that, you see. But this man delights in the unchanging eternal truths that come from God, that come from his word. And he meditates on that law, and his identity and his life is anchored in the truths that come from that law. And he's like a tree. He's like a tree whose roots are deep in the ground because he's standing right next to a stream, and the roots are so deep and gathering in nourishment, so strong and so rooted, right? So anchored there. We've all seen trees like that. But the wicked are not so, it says. The wicked are not so. They're like chaff, right? What's chaff? Chaff is the little fluffy weightless stuff that comes off the green grains of wheat when you thresh it and the seed falls to the seed falls to the threshing floor and the chaff just goes up in the air, you know, I mean like a little mist, and then the wind carries it away, you see. You could not be more different from a tree rooted in the ground than chaff. People whose identity is in their, their, uh, their reputation, their money, their possessions, their pleasure, all right, their status in the world, all these things that Jesus talks about, woe to you, because you're like chaff. You, you've, you've based your, your, your life on nothing. You've based it on, no, that's nothing. You have no root, you see. You remember the parable of the uh, sower and the seed? And the seed goes out, and it, some people hear it, but they don't put down any roots. And then something happens, and they blow away. See? Now the world is too much. for them. They're too entrenched in the world. They're too entrenched in the world. The Bible looks at, the, at, um, at us and says, look, there's two ways to go. How many ways does Jesus say it? There's the narrow path. There's the broad path. There's the path that leads to life. There's the path that leads to death. Right? There's the way of the world. There's the way of God. There's the dark. There's the light, you see. He says it in any number of ways. There are really only two people, two kinds of people in the world. There's those who acknowledge and know God and understand ourselves to be under his authority and accountable to him for all we do and those who do not. When you do understand your accountability, you immediately are convicted, as we saw last week, you see, of your need for his grace, and he immediately extends it to you. But if you refuse to acknowledge it, all right, and you walk in the way of the wicked, and you scoff at that, and scoff at that as some kind of 
well, that's an old-fashioned way of thinking. And I'm sorry, my friends, this is the way many, many of our, um, what you would have to say, the elite uh, class in our Western, modern Western culture think. Uh, they think in terms of like their own uh, modern uh, contemporary understandings of things are so superior to everything that went before, you see, uh, that all this stuff about the Bible and God and sin and all that is just such old-fashioned thinking. I mean, it's just so old-fashioned. We're so much beyond all that. And they scoff at it. And they pry, they're very proud about it. They're very arrogant about it. You know, they mock uh, people like me who, who hold to this old-fashioned myth and everything like that, you see? They don't want to hear what Jesus says. That's up to them. But what does he say to them? Woe to you. Woe. Woe to you, he says. Sure, oh yeah, you, you're popular now. You're, you're getting a lot of popularity. You're, you're on TV and you're, you're way more popular and inf richer and influential than poor little Paul Rosa, chaplain there. But he's going to be blessed. And you are going to be <laughs> cursed, see? Because everybody's talking about you now, but they said the same thing about the false prophets. There'll come a time when they, you don't matter to them at all. But this guy here, Paul Rosa, and you, you who are listening to me, you matter to God. And you will always matter to God. Nothing's going to change that. That's not going to go away, you see. It's not going to change as opinions change and values change and, the, and ideas change in the world. You see, there's a singer, for example, famous people, big superstars. There's a, a singer named Adele, Adele, and she's a very big star, and she's sold gajillions of records, and she's an unbelievably powerful uh, voice and everything. So she won an award for best, what used to be best female vocalist, right? Used to be best female vocalist, but they changed female. They got rid of female to erase the gender differential anymore they, they, because they don't want to they don't, they don't want to get away from this distinction between male and female that's where we've got they won't even acknowledge that distinction and she uh gets her award and said i just want to say i'm thankful for this award and i understand why you changed the name but i am proud to be a woman she said and i'm very proud of what all women have done uh, to advance ourselves in this industry, and entertainment industry. That sounds reasonable, right? She's proud to be a woman. She's happy for other successful women, etc., like this. She gets crucified on social media for saying hateful things about transgender people now, okay? That's where, that's where we've, people are taking us, you see, to such nonsense like this. And what in the world is, is, is God supposed to do with a person like that, you see? They're, they're choosing all these things. They're drawing other people into it. They're filling everybody's heads with utter nonsense. And they're congratulating themselves about it. And meanwhile, here's the Bible saying, watch it. Woe is you if you keep doing that. If they don't want to hear it, they don't want to hear it. That's all there is to it. Uh, the things I'm saying are not um, popular now. They're not popular for people to say or hear. Um, uh, the the uh, culture's created a, a, a sort of a, a nonsense idea that there aren't any distinctions between things, even to the point where we don't even distinguish between male and female anymore, you know, uh, to, to fulfill some sort of strange new obsession with identity. Meanwhile, the Bible is clearly telling you what our identity truly is, where it is blessed. It is blessed when you are anchored in the truth and the word of God and acknowledge him as your source of life and truth and hope. We continue to hold to this and will continue to hold to it. In my role as chaplain, I, of course, find myself 
more often than I'd like at the bedside of a person who's about to go home to be with Jesus. At that moment, how much does their money matter? How much does their reputation among their friends, their beauty, you know, their, their pleasures, etc., how much does it matter? No, what it really comes down to then, do, do they belong to Jesus then? Do they know that they're going home to Jesus? That's what matters. The rest is chaff. But that relationship with Jesus endures forever. He will hold on to you and nothing will snatch him out of your hand. That is your identity. There's the righteous, there's the wicked, there's the blessed, and there's those who are woe. Which one do you want to be? Trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us pray. Your word is just as plain as day, Heavenly Father. It's so plain and clear that it does challenge so much of the pride and uh, puffed up sense of ourselves that so many of us have. I pray that it will cut through uh, all of the foggy notions that fill our minds <clears throat> and uh, concerns and things that distress us and we become so concerned about this and that and just cut it through to remind us, Lord, that where our blessing truly is in hungering for you, desiring you, following you, and most of all, believing in you and trusting in you and receiving the blessing of your forgiveness that we might belong to you and receive that assurance of eternal life that is our inheritance as your children. I mentioned um, my um, occasional ministry to those who are imminent uh, in your about to come into your presence and um, for those especially I pray that they will know your touch uh, when that time comes. I pray that for all of us. Help us all understand that as our lives go on ultimately we come down to that. We are getting ready to come and be with you. So make that our goal. Make that what we desire. Make that uh, what we seek as we sang in the beginning, seek first, first your kingdom and allow all these other things to be given to us as you see fit, Heavenly Father. Enable us to live out our lives in peace, comfort, and security, placing all of our trust and hope in you and in your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who has taught us to pray in this way. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now I have another song, which you don't know, but it's a lovely song. <clears throat> I'm just going to do it for you, called Blessed Are They, based on the Beatitudes. How many verses have I got? Thirst, they shall. 
shall have their fill Rejoice and be glad Blessed are you, holy are you Rejoice and be glad Yours is the kingdom of God Blessed are they who show mercy Mercy shall be theirs. Blessed are they, the pure of heart, they shall see God. Rejoice and be glad. Blessed are you, holy are you. Rejoice and be glad. Yours is the kingdom of God. are they who seek peace they are the children of god blessed are they who suffer in faith the glory of god is there rejoice and be glad blessed are you holy are you rejoice and be glad You're is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you, the persecuted, all because of me. Rejoice and be glad, yours is the kingdom, shine for all to see. Rejoice and be glad, blessed are you, holy are you. Yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are those who walk not in the counsel of the wicked, or stand in the seat of scoffers, or sit in the way of sinners, but their delight is in the law of the Lord. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. Go in peace, you righteous, and may the blessing of God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen.